Hi everyone, it's Jen Seal. I want to welcome you to this new space that I have created for my online Monday night yoga class. I'm doing one yoga class a week. It's at this time Monday live, 5.30, 6.30 every week. Um, so yeah, um, let's get started. So today for me, it is nearly 100 degrees outside. I chose to go on a bike ride today, um, just, just to give them a little bit of exercise and was very excited to get back <laughs> and jump in the water. Um, but along my, along my ride today, I just realized a couple of times where I was extremely aware of the fact that it was hot, that I had to hydrate, I had to breathe and not overexert myself. I was very aware of my posture because when I get uncomfortable, I start to do this. And my yoga practice has informed me on all of that, how to be mindful about my, just taking care of myself no matter what I'm doing. So even cycling today, I was mindful of how I was breathing after I went in an incline so as not to overheat, how long it would take me to sort of recover and get my breath back to know what kind of pace I need to set for myself today <clears throat> so I didn't overexert myself. So I want to do a little bit of breath work today. Just usually what I do for a class, I'm inspired by something in my day or my morning or something that I've seen or heard or read. So today it was my bike ride. <laughs> um, and it was a breathing part particularly that I was extremely excited about just yoga. So I'm breathing, I'm doing yoga breath right now. I'm slowing it down. I'm taking deep breaths in as I'm preparing for this giant hill so I can get as much oxygen as possible into my lungs. Okay. So for today, if it's hot like it is here for me, I mean really hot. <laughs> I want you to get some water, okay? Um, I would suggest a block. I would suggest a strap. I'm gonna use a strap today. And if you don't have a fancy strap, you can use something else to substitute, but a real strap for this is going to actually really be sweet and juicy for you. <clears throat> a tie would work, probably a scarf might work. Um, but something you can sort of get to be able to tie once I share with you what we're doing. So to begin with, I just want you to sit up nice and tall, and just take a few moments to center yourself right where you're at. So maybe um, placing something underneath you, like me, I have a bolster underneath my uh, seat. It elevates me, keeps my knees above my hips, okay? Closing the eyes, the nice place to start as you root down into the mat, into a block, into a pillow the bolster, you're feeling centered, you're feeling supported, more importantly, you're feeling safe. You get a sensation of that weightedness in your hips, into your legs, and your feet. Take a nice deep breath in. And let it out with a big deep sigh. Take a breath in. <clears throat> Exhale it out. One more like that. Deep breath in. And out with a sigh. Good. Now focus on the upper body from the hips up through the crown of the head. Okay, so focus more on the inhales here. Draw the breath in through your nose as you lift up. Feel light. Exhaling again, rooting down into your seat into the earth, if you will. So if you're breathing in here, you're breathing into the heart, into the lungs, into the entire body. Feeling that lightness as you root up, lift up towards the ceiling, towards the sky, towards the sun. Maybe keep the mouth closed here. Take a few more deep breaths in and out through the nose. And just feel the body start to soften in inward to the center of each and every breath. Soften the eyes, the cheeks, the face, the neck, the shoulders, the whole back, front, side, waist, arms, hips, and legs. And begin to quiet the breath. 
and still trying to manage to equalize the inhales with the exhales. So if you find that your inhales are longer than your exhales, focus on trying to keep those exhales equal to those inhales, or vice versa. Notice where you still may be holding tension from your day. For me, it's 5.30, so it is heading towards evening after a long weekend. So just now get, gauge just how your body, your whole body is feeling now. Just be an observer to that. Your body will continue to breathe for you as you just take your awareness towards the body and towards your mind. Cleansing out the mind clutter as well, like mental floss, by just breathing in and out. Flushing away tension, and any other feelings that may be creeping in that you really don't want there. Let's take one more nice deep breath in and out together. And let it out with the mouth open. You can keep your eyes closed here. Just bring your arms down and dangle by your side as you breathe in. Take a nice deep breath and let those arms rise up, let them float up. As you exhale, let them float down. Maybe chin comes down towards chest. Shoulders are relaxed away from the ears. Inhale. Exhale, bow. As you inhale, palms turn up, shoulders down. Chin lifts away from the chest, and as you exhale again, bring the chin towards chest. One more, lift it up. And bring your hands to your heart center, just neutralize your gaze. Bow your chin slightly down towards your fingertips. Let's just set an intention for our practice today. You may have your own personal intention or way of being. Um, trait you want to cultivate, you may be working on it already. If you do not, just focus on awareness. Awareness of the breath as we move through the class today. Where it may stutter, where it may stop, where it may hold it, and begin to breathe again. One more breath in. Exhale. And slowly open your eyes. You just shrug your shoulders up and back and just sort of kind of move in your seat a little bit <clears throat> since we were moving and we, were, you know, we weren't moving, we were still. And round yourself forward and back. And if it feels better to do this without your seat underneath you, feel free to do that, All right? We're just sort of lubricating the hip joints, you know, um, the lower back, the spine, and the shoulders. Maybe let the neck be soft here and spongy. And do the opposite direction. So I'm going to feel what it feels like to take this out. Ah, yes, I feel like I can get a little deeper. And you pull back. Forward, drop the shoulders down. I'm going to get them around to the other side because it feels good. Yeah. All right, we're going to grab a hold. Grab a hold of that strap right here, right now. If it feels better for you, Cross-legged is not comfortable, so I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to come to my knees for this practice or <clears throat> elevate yourself back on your seat. Now you can come to Barasana, just hero pose. I can do this very easily. It doesn't bring attention to my knees or my quads. <clears throat> okay. Ask me about my shoulders. Flexibility, different story. You can also take something and put it underneath you like that. A blanket, a pillow, if that helps you. Okay. Or you can even just be up in your knees and shins. Options. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your strap. <clears throat> you're going to put it on like you're putting on a tie. Right? This is just a little alignment for your uh, shoulders. To keep your shoulders be mindfully drawn down and away. And also keep your spine nice and straight and your core nice and engaged. So make sure they're even. You're going to take it behind your back. I'm going to turn my back to you. And we're going to take them and cross them behind. And sort of drawing down, like you're drawing down towards the buttocks, and then pull it back around forward. So just around the hips, right? Adjust your neck here so you don't want it pinchy. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to tie it. So you're going to take it, it's going to be a little loose, and you're going to draw it down and feel the shoulders 
pushing back. So maybe gently squeezing the shoulder blades on the back. This actually feels pretty good for me being on my knees and shins. Um, totally fine to do that. You can come down here as well. Just be mindful not to pop the belly button forward. Keep it in. And then you're going to take it and you're going to <coughs> cross it in front of you. Now, I just tied it into a gentle little knot. And what I want you to feel is just how, if you try to hinge forward here, like draw your belly button towards your spine, you're going to feel a really serious resistance up here with the shoulders. Right? Most of the practices we want to do, we want to have a nice open chest and we want to have the shoulders pressing down away from those ears. So I want you to just feel how that feels here. Okay. Take a nice deep breath in and out. And let's just do a couple of movements with this position. Okay, so you'll notice if you try to do cow here or cat pose where you draw it in a way, your shoulders are not going to be able to hunch forward like they normally do. And as you maybe bring your fingers back, Lift forward, you're going to notice how freeing that is, right? That they're helping to draw the shoulders away. And again, just gently pulling the belly away, try to press the back of, you know, the lower back into that strap. Tighten it as you need to. Lifting in, broaden the chest. Just also encouraging these heart openers, right? As we're lifting the chest, we're opening the heart space. And counteracting all of the crunching that we do during the day. Let's do one more. And as you pull the belly in, you're exhaling. And as you're lifting your chest up, pressing the chest forward, you are inhaling. <clears throat> all right, side body stretch. So again, if you need to come back to that cross-legged position, you can sometimes feel like you are cutting off the circulation to your feet. You like what you are, but you're not here alone, so it's okay. Just stay. So a lot of times when we come into the side body stretch like this, right, I see people hinging forward or down. So this is just to inform you, even in our like triangle pose, warrior two poses, we want to keep our bicep by our ear. This is helping us do that. Let's do one more round. The twisting is going to feel weird. We're moving on onto that now, <clears throat> but here we go. Ready? Windmill. It keeps your spine nice and straight. It's so amazing. And first time I did this, it helped me so much. I'm like, I know how it feels to have my shoulders down and back. I know how it feels to have my heart space open and twist to the other side. I'm going to take this off in a moment and come back to center. Take it off. Now, it's going to feel really weird. Okay. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel airier, right? But off to the side, we'll use it later. And just feel that. Feel how it just, now you can feel what it's like to have beautiful, good posture in a seated, seated position. Let's come on to our, we've been sitting for a long time, so come up onto your knees and chins. Get a nice deep breath in and just reach those arms up. Push those hips slightly forward. Good. And then bring your arms down. You're gonna bring your hands down onto the floor and you can come onto your mat, come onto the, uh, your belly. You can get there any way you want. I'm gonna go from plank pose, okay? And I'm gonna lower my knees, lower my chest. Bend the elbows back. Back a little bit here. You see. <clears throat> okay. Typically, when we're lowering down, our hands are by our breastbone. I'm gonna ask you to bring them just slightly forward. Hug the elbows in, okay? Press the tops of the feet down, press the thighs down, hips down, and lightly lift your palms up away from the mat, okay? And then just slowly lift up for gentle cobra. And then press the palms down, forehead down. Let the shoulders relax down. And then as you inhale, draw those elbows down by your sides. You're going to feel those shoulders just like we did, pulling back and down. Lift the hands, lift to cobra. And then back down. Again, shoulders back, elbows down, hands lift, cobra. So you're not going very far, right? Press the tops of the feet down. And now we're going to do it with our palms pressing down. So lift again. Press the toes, press the thighs, press the hips, shoulders, elbows down, hands lift, lift up to cobra, and then put your palms down and lift up a little higher and let that chest move forward. Slowly warming up the lower back, lower yourself down. Excellent. We're gonna roll over onto our left side, bring your left forearm in front of you, roll over, and then support your head with your hand. Bend your right knee, you might have to move your left foot forward or you can bend it a little bit and reach back and grab your right foot. 
We're just going to stretch out the front of the quad. So again, I'm doing some things here that I would do post bike ride on my own anyway. So you don't have to have done a ride to have this benefit you, but this is a really good kind of post bike riding um, class, if you will. Excellent, then come on to the other side. So I'm gonna roll onto my right side body now, right forearm in front of me, and then rolling, supporting my head with my hand. Grab a hold of the top of your left foot or your ankle. Draw your left heel towards your buttock. If you need more, keep pushing the knee back. Press your palm into your hand, your hand into your palm. And then again, readjust, try to draw your heel towards your butt. One more breath and release. And come on to the belly one more time. Now extend your arms out to a T. This is for your shoulders, my friends. You can turn and look towards that right hand, draw the right hand in towards your right breastbone or just in front of, and then extend your left fingertips out to the left with your palm facing down. So it's like that on the left side. Roll over and bend your front knee, sorry. And then you can tap the floor behind you. You can bring your head down to the mat. Only go as far as good for your left shoulder. It's a left shoulder, inner shoulder hip uh, opener, but it's also opening up this right front hip and so as that deep inner muscle in there, hip flexor muscle. I'm gonna do the other side. So. Lay back down on your belly, extend your right arm out to the side. You can't see it, but my palm is down on the mat and it's flat and my fingers are wide. And I'm gonna lift my left hand, my little chicken wing up there and I'm gonna roll, bend my left knee and plant the left toe if I can on the floor. And breathe, maybe the side of the head comes down. And come back to center. And then a lot of stuff in the shoulders today. Bring your hands to now, bring them slightly back. Okay, so we're gonna curl the toes under, you know, press up, lift up. So you should be right there. Wrist should be right underneath your shoulders, right? And then lower yourself back down. And then press back up. Let's just do a few of these. Okay, three more. If these are hard, only go as far as you can go, but keep your head back and have the shoulders away from the ears. Elbows come down by your sides. Don't touch the belly button, just the chest if you're going all the way down. Three, two, let's just tricep strength here, my friends. Oh, wait, two, <laughs> and one. So I noticed also today, you move back towards child's pose and bring your hands behind you instead of in front of you, which is what I'm going to do, but you can certainly stay here if you'd like. I noticed how much my triceps um, were a part of my cycling as well, you know, when I had to break and things like that. Spend a couple moments in child's pose, allowing the lower back to sink down, to elongate, elongate. The tailbone roots down towards your heels. Reach those arms forward, come up to all fours. Roll the toes under, downward facing dog pose. You always have an opportunity in your downward facing dog, especially the first one, to make sure you have the length you need by coming forward to high plank and your shoulders should be right over your wrists. As you draw the belly in, right? Nice long line, head is back. Look at that strap, okay? And send it back. So now you're good, right? Bring your feet a little closer together. Big toes can touch or maybe they're just next to each other. And bring your right leg up. And pressing the left heel down and soften your gaze towards the back of the room. And plant that foot back on the mat. Left leg lifts up. Bend the knee, open the hip, press the right heel down. Hey, just feel the leg, feel your calf. Your calf and your Achilles are so happy, maybe not. And bring it back down. We're gonna lift the right leg up once again. Halfway, draw the right knee in towards your right elbow. 
done these before, right? Nice and slow today. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. I think that's my battery warning. And step it forward. Bring the back knee down, soften the toes, and reach up here. And just stay here in modified crescent lunge pose, just for a moment. Sink down. Oh, yeah, it's not connected. Just keep breathing. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> and slowly, come back to downward facing dog. Something always has to happen. It's so fun. I love these live things. All right, now again, we're gonna do it again. Bring your right leg up. So we were just here, right knee, right elbow. Send it back, inhale, right knee, left elbow. Send it back, and then right to the center. Pull it in, draw it in, lift it up, round the back, step it forward, widen the feet, reach it up. Full crescent lunge pose. This feels a little different, right? You can still bring your back knee down if you'd like. Back knee softly bends, right knee deepens, and now, how much can you draw the left thigh back? Maybe just a little bit. Shoulders are relaxed and down. Belly is lifted in. And then slowly come down. Again, lift it back. You can lift it up and open the hip. Third time a charm. Stand back behind you. Look forward, round the back. Right knee, right elbow. Inhale. Left elbow. Inhale it back. Mindfully look forward. Step forward again. Okay, lift it up. Bring your hands to your heart center and twist. So building today, really draw the right thigh back now. Engage the glutes. Stay here with your palms pressing and your thumbs work towards the sternum to help you twist. And that right elbow is keeping the right knee hugging in or open the arms, but don't let go of the knee, okay? Knee hugs in. And don't compromise your shoulders. And then bend the elbow a little bit. One more breath. And down. Send it back. Last time, open it up. And bring it down. Pedal those feet, wag the tail. Shake the head. Make sure our down dog is where you want it to be. So hinge forward, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Perfect. Left leg lifts up, bend the knee, open the hip. Re-extend, square it off. Left knee, left elbow. And back. Left knee, right elbow. It's a little bit of the obliques there. Back, center. Pull it in. Step it forward, right knee down. Soften the back toes. Take a moment. Take a moment to get into it the way you want. You know how you want it to feel, right? So make it feel that way. If you want to suffer, we want to enjoy, but also benefit. And we're breathing, so be mindful of that breath again. Last one. Into the nose, maybe out to the mouth. Hands down. Foot comes back, downward facing dog. You can lift the left leg up and bend the knee, open the hip if you'd like. And re extend it right away. Second one, left knee in, hug it in, left elbow. We'll be doing it slow today. Because again, for me, it's 90 <laughs> something. Okay, so slower doesn't mean easier. Sometimes it's harder. Step it forward. So, left foot, left thumb. Make sure your feet are wide enough. Lift up. Crescent lunge can be tricky. So I'm gonna like even come out of it just for a moment. Make sure my toes are pointing forward. I'm looking forward, I'm gonna bend both knees. Come deep into the left knee. And slide the right leg back as much as I can. So I cycled today, so I did a lot of forward bending, right? So this is a little tight for me, so I'm gonna keep the back knee bent a little bit. And down, send it back. We extend last one, left knee, left elbow. Send it back. 
left knee, right elbow. You go a little farther there. In the back, challenge yourself whenever you want. Step it, lift it. So now we should be feeling what the upper body should feel like. We should be able to make those quick adjustments because we've been here before. Bring your hands to your heart. Twisting to your left, right elbow over left side. Pressing the palms, thumbs towards sternum. Really grow long in your spine. Opening the arms if that pleases you. Since I did it on the other side, I'll do it on this side as well. Keep the left knee hugging in. And hand down. Left foot back. Again, you can lift that left leg, open the hip if you want, or just put all feet out. So look forward towards the front of your mat, begin to walk. Take your feet wide. Bring your hands to your knees. And just sink your hips down for a moment, which you elongate your spine. Okay, now you're here. So you can probably reach towards your straps. I'm gonna ask you to do that now. Take your hands in your strap and release. So take the hand, take the strap behind you. So bend the knees maybe a little bit here. And take the hands closer together, right? And begin to move your arms over your head. Now I can't really do this when I have my hands clasped together. So check, just feel it for yourself. Palms can be facing down, or I just do what works for you. But I love the resistance here. My shoulders get a little bit of a deeper um, stretch than I can do for myself. Wider, definitely better for me. You can maybe clasp the hands together if you'd like and see if that feels, but this feels pretty darn good. And slowly, again, come to bent knees, bring your Hands to your knees, look forward, and then just slowly fall forward. Take the strap, reach the side. We'll use again in a moment. Halfway left, bring those feet closer together. I'm really close to that. These windows. <laughs> Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Get some hands to heart. Let's pause here for a second. This is where I say, because I need to do it, if you need to. Fix yourself, fix your hair, your clothes, wipe off some sweat, take a drink. Do that, please, right now. All right. Strap time. You may not have ever done this before. And if you do have one of these, it's going to be, like I said, kind of really juicy. If you have something else you're working with, it may not feel quite the same. Go. If it bothers you, then just do... Um, do it without. I'm going to do the same thing we did on the, on the mat, okay? So again, second time. We've done it before, right? Take it like you're going to wear a tie. Take it behind you and just cross over. So it looks like an X, okay? And then you're going to draw your, it down and then pull your belly in so you're engaging. So it looks like this. I'm pulling it. My belly goes out. My chest goes out, right? But then you want to pull the belly in, okay? That's engaging your core. Again, make sure it's not too, too tight. Just enough to inform. <clears throat> I'm gonna do one little half knot, okay? And already, this is beautiful to us, so we can't do this. It, it feels, you, you get the resistance, right? Nice and tall. Come to the top of your mat, so guess what we're gonna do? I'm gonna do some salutations with this on our body, man. So if you don't have a strap or whatever, do regular salutations with the mindfulness to draw those shoulders down, okay? <clears throat> Feet inner hip width, always spring. Sometimes together if you want to challenge yourself. This is just going to be the space you need, okay, to create increased flexibility. Push down, root up, lift up. Take a nice brief breath in. And exhale out. Here we go, root down. Arms reach up. Exhale. Hinge halfway. Notice, right? You're not, you're not able to round the back as much. You're going to feel it. And then come to your shins. Hands halfway lift. Mindfully bend and step those feet back to high plank pose. Leave your knees up if you want to leave them up or lower them down. I'm going to lower them down today because it's hot. Lower back. And then try not to overexert. Inhale. Remember that cobra pose. 
using the back muscles, right? Curl the toes under, press up, full or partial plank. Here's our downward dog. And just again, notice maybe widen your arms, make space for those shoulders. Take a breath in and a breath out. Walk ourselves forward. And the shins halfway left. Again, feel the shoulders move back. How good does that feel? Hold and rise to stand. Do you feel that? I hope you feel that. I wish I could see you guys so I could see your faces all enlightened and super happy. Let's do one more. With or without, if you don't like it, take it off. Hands down. Inhale, reach up. I'm not here to torture anybody. Much. <laughs> Halfway. And slowly, gently float back. I'm going to leave my knees lifted this time and just see how it feels. Because I'm going to help my elbows in. Lower down. Yes, that's better. Roll it up. Cobra. Exhale. Full plank or modified. I'm going to try a full one here. Lift the thighs, lift the belly. Push. Those are not easy, my friends. Those modified push-ups we did earlier are going to help. Look forward and walk forward. Halfway lift. And fold. Getting a little deeper there, actually. Inhale. Reach it up. And hands to the heart. Now, here's the fun part. You take this sucker off. Relax your neck a little bit. Bring your right shoulder to your right ear. Left ear, left shoulder. Lift the chin away from the chest. You can drop the strap. You can take the hands to the back of the head. Let the head just fall into those hands. And then gently nod forward. And release. One salutation here. Inhale. Notice how light you might feel, how free. Exhale. Halfway lift. And then step back. Now you're still remembering, right? Nice, long spine. Lower down. Now I'm eating my strap. Lift up to cobra, maybe up dog if you'd like. And down. I'm going to go for it again. I'm going to move my hands back, lift the thighs, lift the belly, engage the core, and use just the strength of my arms. My core to lift, push, and back. Grab the head, shake it out. Awesome job. Lift your right leg up here and step it forward to your right thumb. We'll start on this side. Left heel down, warrior two. That's wide, bend the knee. Align your heel, heel to heel. I was a little out alignment there. Reach the arms wide. So a good thing to do here is to turn your palms up. Maybe to feel your shoulder, the upper rotation of your shoulder. And then slowly just move the forearms down to keep the shoulder rotation. Windmill the arms down. Step back to down dog, go through the flow. So again, it depends on how much energy, how much you know you want to use today. I actually realize I'm really okay. I'm gonna slide my hands back into up dog here. And I'm gonna lift up to down with using the dog. Left leg lift, step it forward. Spin the back heel down. I'm gonna look here now. Slightly out of alignment. I'm gonna fix that here before I come up. So for me, the level of my uh, ceiling is uh, guiding me towards my alignment. How cool is that? I want you to do the same. Look back and make sure your right hand is as high as your left hand. Good. Look over your left finger to strong warrior pose. Throw those palms up. And again, notice the extra rotation of the shoulders. Keep that. Just roll the forearms down. The car roll the arms down. Again, flow or just down dog it. I'm gonna go halfway to Chaturanga. Up dog to Cobra, or Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. Look forward, walk or step forward. Gentle little hop forward, halfway lift. And fold. And rise. Close to heart. All right, I'm turn toward you. Do a short little balance and sequence today. Um, I'm on my mat, which is on a sturdier carpet than what was downstairs. I have a tendency to um, 
stable. I feel stable here, but you're welcome if you're at home to step off the carpet and onto tile, onto the floor <laughs> um, for more stability. Okay. Sometimes squishiness makes you less stable. So push into your left leg, engage your left glute. I don't want to see any fancy hip pop going on, okay? Push down. This is going to be fun. My knees are sweaty. <laughs> Bring your hands to your right knee. Lift the left arm up. And right here is the great place to be. You can stay here if you want. If you're still working balance, or just or open it up. Right knee to the right, left arm to the left. And this little mudra that I do here, just sort of organically, you bring your forefinger and your thumb together to touch. Um, it's called Gyan Mudra. It's a mudra of concentration. So I love it for balancing poses. I do it all the time. I don't even know I'm doing it anymore. And then come right into tree pose. Okay, so tree pose can start here, kickstand inner shin, or if my foot won't slide, I'm gonna go to my upper thigh, I'm good there. Again, you can use any mudra that you know of that works for you to help enhance your pose. This is telling you to just focus. So find something that's not moving. Don't look away. Where your gaze goes, so your body will fall. Looking forward. I'm here. You can certainly re reach your arms up. You can bring your palms together. You can take your hands behind you. And notice right now, did your glutes just sort of let go? Like, oh, I don't have to work anymore. No, they do. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And press your foot into your thigh, your thigh into your foot, or wherever you're at. Building muscular endurance in the standing leg. Strengthen your ankles, shin, thigh. Caps, all good. Slowly lower and bring that foot down. Shake, 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 shake your booty. Shake your booty. You're gonna notice this. This leg probably feels a little heavier. Your feet might feel a little tingly, so just you might want to shake it around a little bit. Get that blood flow going again. <clears throat> Press down into your left foot. Don't lock your leg out. Okay, locking anything is really not a good thing. It can cause hyperextension. Engage. I just did that side. Press your right leg down. <laughs> I need people here to keep me in, in, uh, on track. Okay, push your right foot down and press. See how I just got longer and taller? Engage your right glute, okay? And bring your left knee in. You can rotate the ankle there, that might feel nice. Your right thigh engaged, your right glute engaged. When you're ready, I really have to grip my left knee here. So to be quite honest with you, a strap might be nice to put on the bottom of my foot and kick my foot out, but I'm gonna go for it here. I'm gonna try, I'm not here that long. Right arm goes out, I'm gonna bring my fingertips to my thumb for Gaya Mudra. Shoulders are down away from the ears, so remember that good posture. Toes can be pointed or flexed, I don't care, or just relaxed. And then right into tree pose. So we're doing more on the standing leg, right? What does that do? It builds endurance. I'm gonna find my little piece thing, my little fingers, okay? And we're gonna reach them up this time. I'm growing my branches. Then again, what's going on on your back side of your body? So for me, I'm a toe gripper. I'm trying to remind myself to start with my foundation, which is my feet, and stop gripping my toes, right? Engage my quad, engage my glutes, and keep my focus on one point of interest, which for me is the little light on my camera. Good. Are you sitting up nice and tall? See, I just looked outside. Slowly lower. Check it out. That's it. That's it for the standing postures today. I want to come down to the mat. I want to open up the front of the, the, front of the hips. I'm going to open the side of the hips here. So let's come on down. So if you were here before, let's come on down to knees and shins, okay? Knees and shins. Camel pose, this is where the block comes in handy today. 
bring it by your ankle. Now, if you are flexible in your back, it's totally fine. Toes can be curled under. I'm gonna curl my toes under here um, to elevate my ankle so I can touch them. Now I'm just gonna do half camel today. Okay, so I want you to engage your like engage your core, drop your tailbone down, and create more space between your sternum and your belly button. You lift up, so you're lifting up to the upper back first. Okay, bring your left hand to your left hip, right arm reaches up, and bring it back. Fingertips pointing to the back of the room, touching your foot, your ankle, or the block. And don't strain, I don't want you to crane, so you want your hips facing forward. So you can see I don't have a huge back bend here. Left arm can go up. I like to support my head with my hand, which is um, takes tension away from my neck. Letting my whole front body open up all the way from really my throat down the front of my chest to my belly button and my, the front of my hips all the way down to my knees. Breathe. Soften the face, jaw, neck, and breath. And take one more inhale here. You can even look over your right shoulder if you'd like. Slowly come up. To come to tabletop position, but take your hands a little bit wider toward the outer corners of your mat. Walk your hands forward. Keep your hips above your knees and just slowly walk, walk, walk. And bring the forehead down maybe. So you're not allowing yourself cat position just yet. Because that would be the extreme of what we just did. Okay, so you're letting your spine relax a little bit more. To neutral. Now you can breathe in here. And now you can slowly move to cat pose if that feels like the right thing for you. Cat. Cat. We get to do another. So let's come up onto our knees and shins. Block goes to the left side. So if you've noticed, we've done a lot of sort of shoulders um, opening, front of chest opening, hip opening, right back strengthening, shoulder strengthening. Again, great for anybody, but you want to soften your toes for a second. You can do that. Your toes are starting to clamp. All right, setting up for half camel. Knees can be together slightly apart. Can't see mine. I wanted to let you know what they were doing. <clears throat> left hand on left hip, left arm reaches up, hips are forward. Take a breath in. Again, lengthen from the upper back. Lift there. Lift there. Arms reach up and back. I'm gonna look down to see where my block is. Right underneath my hand is right under my shoulder. Right arm reaches up and that left hip comes forward and right hip goes forward. And I'm lifting through the upper palate here. I'm gonna hold my head. Never want to have our lower back take all the pressure in any posture. I want to have the spine, the whole spine, be part of the part of the party. Breathing here can be difficult. So just slowly breathe into your nose and see if you can get that breath into the back of the throat, nice and slow. Well. One more breath. Slowly come up. This is a deep back bend, and especially if you're doing two hands at once. We didn't do that today, but it's super intense. So this time, take your knees wide and just sink your hips back. Walk yourself towards child pose. You'll just feel a slight curvature in your lower back, right? You can kind of feel the back might feel tight initially so you just want to keep breathing there as the lower back if you can slow, you know feel the release so again use that breath here draw the breath in and use the exhale to quiet that area to bring it back to neutral slowly lift up we really don't want to bring ourselves into a state where we are doing something super fast and we just stop all of a sudden. We have to go slow and do counter poses that make sense. Let's come on to our back. Sorry I'm drinking a lot today, guys, but <laughs> I can tell for me it's necessary for the sweat that I'm experiencing right now. 
Right. And that's my motto, by the way. You should sweat at least once every day. I don't care what you're doing. It could be mowing the lawn. Right. So I like to do this, especially after some sort of seriousness towards my post bike ride uh, workout that I would be doing, even if I didn't was working with anybody, if, even if I wasn't doing a class, and this is what I would do for myself. Bend the left knee, extend your right leg up towards the ceiling and place that strap on the ball mound of your right foot. This is probably one of my favorite stretches to do post anything active, okay? <clears throat> this and legs up the wall. Stay here with just a slight bend in the knee as you draw the right thigh towards the belly, okay? You should feel it here in the back of the leg. If you wanna feel a little bit more in the front of the left thigh, you can press the left thigh down. And you're using your hands to just gently, you know, guide the leg a little farther than it would go if you just grabbed the back of your leg yourself. Your muscles really will not allow you to go farther than you're able to is if you push it. So your body talks to you, you have to listen. But you have to know that you probably have a little bit, a little bit more to give than you're getting, if that makes any sense. The longer you stay, the more range of motion you can get. Now, take that leg, I'm gonna bring it forward a little bit and bend your right elbow out, create a little bit more space on the strap and then bring it to the right. Keep your left hand on your left hip. I just heard a bunch of little pops there in my back. But I think that just because I'm old doesn't hurt. I just am aware that it's doing that. I do mention those things to my doctor when I go to see her every year. Like if there's a change in uh, what I'm hearing or feeling, I will let her know. That's always a good thing. Yoga, body awareness, bend the knee. Right back up to center, same thing. I'm gonna push my foot a little bit forward, take the strap in my left hand, support myself either here with my right hand and my right shoulder on the mat, or I'm gonna take my right hand to my right hip and just slowly bend my left elbow and bring my, oh my God, my right leg down towards the floor. My leg is not touching because I'm sort of trying to find the stretch that feels good. If you get to that, oh my God, place, stop there and breathe into it, feel it. What is it that you're feeling? What is it that's doing that and where, more importantly, and why? What did you do? And then allow yourself to lift up into the full twist by lifting that right glute off the mat. So my right shoulder just lifted up a lot, which is okay. Just don't let it hang out in space. Like, mm, like bend it, place it somewhere. Slowly bend the knee. This is what I like to do here, okay? You're gonna keep the straps in your right foot now. So you both, both butts, cheeks are on the mat. Slowly bend your right knee out to the right and pull that leg in. Right heel towards the left shoulder. If you need to bend the knee, so you see what this looks like, we usually do this sort of thing. You can try that. You bend the knee, draw your knee towards that right foot, the right ankle. I feel that just enough right here. Using the strap is getting a little bit deeper in, and my knee pulling that in is oi, oi, oi. Everyone has a phrase. I often say oi, oi, oi. And even post a little more resistance by placing my right hand on my right knee. So this is a supine pigeon pose on your back. But I can also just keep using that strap, I'm using my knee to pull in. So many options here. Also, this is where we stop breathing. We start feeling that real deep tightness. We're like, oh, right? The breath goes away. Breathe through it, which you need to do to break it out. Slowly with the release. And lift this up and down. And let's let the left leg follow with. And notice what you feel. Both, both 
both of my hips are hot right now. So normally your right hip would feel really hot right now. Both of mine feel really hot. All right. Same thing, bend the knees, left foot goes up. And then begin to draw your thigh toward with a slight bend at first. And then as you begin to straighten it, you're gonna find that maybe you can bring your toe a little closer towards your head, or maybe you need to take it a little farther away and maybe you straighten it. Be mindful of how much work your shoulder or your arms are doing as well. You really don't want to strain your shoulders. Extend the right leg if you'd like. This is one where I like to kind of hang out a little bit and allow for the hamstring to stretch. You know, not just like, hey, I'm here, like one, two, three, let's get out of it. That won't do anything. When you're ready, Strap goes in your left hand, I'm gonna let it slide. I'm gonna straighten it sort of so it's at a 90 degree angle and I'm gonna bend my left elbow out, continue to slide as I let my left foot go out, keep my right hand on my right hip to let it flip so it doesn't lift up and gently draw the toes toward the back of the room as much as you can until you feel a stretch. And bring it back up. All of this is mindfully, slowly, like molasses, like slow-mo. Left hand goes left or to your left hip. Slowly guide the strap out of your hand to let it slide so you can allow your right left foot to go down towards the floor, not lifting the left cheek too, too much into a twist so you can find the stretch here in the outer left hip. And then maybe take it all the way down. Same inside my shoulder stays to the mat. So, you know, there's a little bit of imbalance going on there for me and my hips. I'm just constantly trying to work that out. I like the phrase progression over perfection. Um, as long as we're progressing, right? Sometimes we actually go backwards a step or two. If we don't practice for a while, that's okay. Slowly bring it back. Now here we're gonna do again that pigeon posey thing. To start with it straight, bend your right knee. I'd say that is probably the better option to bend the knee. And then begin to let the knee, left knee go left and draw the right heel towards your, toward like your right hip, your right shoulder. I'm getting right up into my foot with my hand so I can keep that grip. And I'm gonna bring that knee up and right there. Ooh la la, right? Oi, oi, oi. And I have to remember to breathe, I really, really do. Even though I've been doing yoga for a long time, I hold my breath too. So I have to remember to relax my upper shoulder. When you're getting deep in there, ooh, tendency is to not breathe. in the eyes, zoning out of anything else going on around you, just focus. Left outer glute, left outer hip. Only work what needs to be worked, so make sure your right foot is relaxed. A lot of times I see people like their legs freaked out. One more opportunity to go just a tad, tad, tad deeper. And then slowly release. Left leg goes up, bring it down. Right leg goes down. Strap off to the side. You're jumping with sucker today. But it was fun. If you used it with me today, I hope you enjoyed that. Reach your arms back behind you. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. And hug those knees into your chest. This is probably going to feel really good. Massage your lower back. I'm going to roll up real quick to see what time it is. Okie dokie. I just said we started a couple minutes late, so I hope this ends up being a 60 minute practice. I did not go over, I hope. All right, last thing. Arms out to a T, knees at 90 degrees, and take your knees over the right side. 
extend the legs long if you'd like. I'm gonna do that today. That feels super good. Shoulders are on the mat. If you can't have both shoulders on your mat at a T, take that hand and bring it down toward an A. You can look over your opposite shoulder. Right palm can be up or down. If this is not work for you, you can keep your knees bent, take your right hand to that left knee and encourage, again, a deeper twist. You decide. One more nice breath here. Notice if you're, again, holding tension in that, maybe that outer right hip that's on the floor that has a tendency to happen. And then bring it back to center. Reset, reset. And you take the legs wide this time. One side's looser than the other, right? 90 degrees, arms down, belly in, knees go to the left. We're gonna watch my right shoulder lift off the mat. So I'm gonna bring it down, turn the palm up, and look over my right shoulder, and turn my left palm up. And to be honest, again, with the heat, I am able to deepen the expression of this pose in my body today. Okay, even though I did a, a bite ride where I felt like I was a tight little knot trying to cut through the heat and get back home. <laughs> Come back to that breath, awareness of breath, always. Take it right, take it off your mat into the rest of your day, into tomorrow. Be mindful when you're breathing, how you're breathing, when you're not breathing. And then start breathing. Your body will always breathe for you. But when you draw your attention to it, you can deepen it, you can change it. Slowly back to center. You can change the way you feel, especially for my friends out there, maybe with anxiety, right? You feel anxiety coming on the breath is a super powerful tool to help keep it under control. All right, guys. So two options. You can come into Shavasana if you'd like. Just extend your legs forward and arms out to your side, or you could do legs up the wall, all right? <coughs> Or you can do, you can come onto your front body. I'm going to choose today to actually come back to my seat. Okay. So your Shabbat's two minutes. Two minutes. Longer if you'd like. Shut me off and just lay there. If I won't know. Any last movement you need to get into your happy place. So for me, it's just taking my knees, my legs wide, feet wide, and dropping my knees in towards one another, as you can see. I'm going to bring my knees together. If you're coming to your seat, just mindfully do this. You roll over to one side. I'm just going to roll up. Keep track of the time with my phone. I'm going to take that bolster back and I'm going to place it underneath my seat. And as you settle into your seat or into Shavasana, right, make sure you're comfortable. Use any props you need to be as comfortable as you can, okay? And then come back inward by dulling the senses. So for me, it's quiet in here. It is warm. Close your eyes. Open your mouth. Move the jaw around a little bit. Take a breath in through your nose. Sigh it out through your mouth. You need to do this a few times. Do that and just systematically release. Okay, you can start with your feet, your ankles, your shins, your, all the way up to the crown of your head. Okay? Breathe naturally, breathe quietly. This is not deep, you know, ujjayi breathing or belly breathing or three part breath. This is just natural breath. Okay?
Wherever you are, begin to gently come back to the present. Come back into the body by bringing your awareness to your extremities first, your toes, your fingers. Big breath in and out. If you're on, legs at the wall just slowly transition so that you can come up to your seats. And again, this is just slow, static, not rushing. If you're in Shavasana, again, just maybe reach your arms overhead, bring your knees into your chest, roll on over onto your side body, take a moment there. And find your way to your seat, all seated together in Sukhasana, easy pose. Sukha means easy. Even this pose is not as easy as people want it to be. Bring your palms together to together, palms to your stone. This is a mudra as well. Just as bring your thumbs to your thumb to your forefinger is a mudra. Concentration. This is Anjali's heart. This is a mudra you could do during your practice as well. Bow your chin to your chest. Come back to whatever intention it was that you set for yourself today. For me, it was just awareness of breath. I'm breathing. I'm alive. Breath in yoga is prana. Yama, prana means energy, our life force. So if you're breathing, it's a good thing. So we really want to honor that, honor our breath today, honor our practice, honor ourselves, honor each other, and this practice of yoga. And your thumbs to set up your forehead, take a nice deep breath in. Exhaling. <laughs> Just bowing forward, namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today, everyone. And I would just ask, this is a new space um, that I've created temporarily for me. Um, I'd like to know if the sound quality was good, if the video quality was good, if the light quality was good. This is the same time frame I'm going to be doing this for now, for the duration of the summer. So I'd appreciate it. I'd love to hear from you, what you enjoyed about class, any little aha moments. <laughs> Maybe one little takeaway that you that you took from the class today. If you did enjoy yourself, and thank you for showing up. Have a beautiful day, morning, evening, wherever you're at.